from around the globe. It's the Cube with digital coverage of AWS reInvent 2020. Sponsored by Intel and AWS. Welcome back to the Cube's ongoing coverage of AWS reInvent Virtual. The Cube has gone virtual too. We're going to talk about machine intelligence, cloud, and transformation in healthcare, an industry that is rapidly evolving and reinventing itself to provide better quality care, faster and more accurate diagnoses, and this has to be done at lower cost. And with me to talk about this is Dr. Taha Kasput, who is the director of machine learning at Amazon Web Services. Doctor, good to see you again. Thanks for coming on. Thank you so much. Good to see you, Dave. Yeah, last time we talked, I think it was a couple of years ago, we were, remember we were talking about a a Amazon Comprehend Medical. And of course you've been so-called so raising the bar, so to speak, over the past 24 <laughs> months. You made some announcements today, including uh, Amazon Health Lake, which we're going to talk yeah. about. Tell us about it. Well, we're really excited about it. Uh, um, uh, and so are our, our customers. Uh, Amazon Health Lake, uh, a new HIPAA eligible uh, service uh, for healthcare providers, health insurance companies, and uh, pharmaceutical companies to securely store, transform, uh, query, and analyze health data in the cloud uh, at petabyte scale. Uh, a, um, Amazon HealthLake uses machine learning models trained to automatically understand context and extract meaningful data from medical data from raw disparate uh, information such as medications, uh, procedures. Um, and uh, diagnoses, um, th therefore revolutionizing a process that was traditionally manual, error prone, and, 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 and highly costly. It requires a lot of expertise uh, on um, uh, teams within these organizations. Uh, what Health HealthLake does is it tags and indexes every piece of information uh, and then structure it in an open standard, uh, the, fi uh, the FIRE standard, or that's the fast healthcare interoperability resources. Uh, in order to provide a complete view, 360 degree view of each patient in a consistent way so you'll be able to query and share that data securely. It also integrates with uh, other machine learning uh, services, analytic services that AWS offers such as Amazon uh, QuickSight or Amazon uh, SageMaker in order to visualize and understand the relationships in the data, identify trends uh, and also make uh, predictions. The other great benefit is since the Amazon Health Lake automatically structures all the healthcare organizations data into an open standard uh, fire industry format, the information now can be easily and securely shared between systems, health systems, um, and with third party applications. So, um, uh, so um, providers, healthcare providers will, will enjoy uh, the ability to uh, collaborate more effectively with each other, but also allowing patients unfettered access to their medical information. I think so. So one of the things that people are going to ask is, okay, wait a minute, HIPAA eligible, is that like cable ready or HD ready? And But people need to understand that it's a shared responsibility model. You can't come out of the box and be HIPAA compliant. There are a number of things and processes uh, that the that, that your customer has to do. Maybe you could explain that a little bit. Absolutely, let me unpack this a, a little bit. This is a very, very important uh, thing and, and uh, it's something that we're really fully baked into the service and how we built also the service, especially dealing with, um, uh, with healthcare information. Uh, for, first off, AWS, as you know, is vigilant about customers' privacy and security. It is job zero for us. Uh, your data in the health lake is secure, compliant, and auditable. Uh, data um, versioning is enabled to protect um, um, uh, this data against any accidental deletion, for example. And per fire specification, if you are to delete one piece of data, uh, it will be versioned. It will be only hidden from analysis as a result, not deleted from the service. So your data is always encrypted um, and using your own customer managed key in a keys in a single um, tenant architecture is another added benefit to provide that additional level of protection when the data is accessed and searched. For example, every time you query a value, for example, someone's glucose level, the data is encrypted and decrypted and, 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 and so on and, 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 and so forth. So uh, the, additionally, uh, this sits in a, in a single tenant architecture so that uh, that way the, um, uh, the, the, the data, uh, uh, the, the key, the same key is not shared across multiple uh, customers. So you retain full ownership and control of your data along with the ability to encrypt it, protect it, move it, delete it in alignment with 
organization uh, security and policies. Now, a little bit about the HIPAA eligibility. Uh, it's, it's a term that AWS uses um, uh, so, so for, pay, for customers uh, storing protected health information or PHI. Uh, AWS, uh, by its business associate agreement uh, and also business associate amendment require customers to encrypt data at rest in transit when they're using AWS services. There are over 100 services today that are HIPAA eligible, including the Amazon Health Lake. This is very important, um, um, especially for um, uh, uh, enabling uh, these covered entities and their business associates subject to HIPAA regulations and is be able to kind of in this um, shared model between what AWS protection and services and how it can process and store and, and manage uh, PHI but there's additional um, um, level of um, compliance is required on the on the customer side uh, and, um, uh, about you know anywhere from physical uh, security to um, how each application can be built, which is no different than how you manage it, for example, today in your own uh, da uh, data center, whatnot. But this is why um, many customers, growing number of healthcare providers. Um, payers as well as IT uh, professionals are using AWS utility-based cloud services today to process, uh, store, and transmit PHI. So tell us more about who is going to benefit uh, from this new capability. What types of organizations and, and what would be some of the outcomes for, for, for yeah, patients? It, absolutely. Every healthcare provider today or a payer like a health insurance company or a life science company such as a pharma company is just trying to solve the problem of organizing and structuring their data. Because if you do, you make better uh, sense of this information from better patient support decisions, design better clinical trials, uh, operate more efficiently, uh, and understand uh, population health trends, uh, and then be able then to share that data securely. It really all starts with making sense of that, uh, of that data. And those are the ultimate customers that we're trying uh, to empower uh, with the, the Amazon, um, Amazon um, Health Lake. Um, well, and of course there's downstream benefits for the patient. Right? That's, absolutely. That's ultimately what we're trying to get to. I mean, absolutely. I mean, I said up front, I mean, it's, it's everybody, uh, you know, feels the pain of high healthcare costs. A lot of times you're trying to get to see a doctor uh, and it's, it takes a long time now, especially with, with COVID. So, and, and, and much of this, oftentimes it's even hard to get access to your own data. Uh, so, so I, I think yeah. you're really trying to attack that problem, aren't you? Absolutely. So I'm going to give you a couple of examples. Like, I mean, today, the most widely used clinical uh, models uh, in practice um, to predict, let's say, someone's disease risk lack personalization. Um, it's, you and I can be lumped in the, same, in the same bucket, for example, based on few attributes that are co common um, uh, data elements uh, or data points, which is problematic also because the resulting models produced are imp imprecise. Um, however, if you look at an individual's medical record, for example, um, you know, a diabetic type two diabetic patient, uh, there, if you look at the entire history and from all this information coming to them, whether it's doctor knows, medication, dosages, which uh, line of treatment, the second line treatment, um, uh, the continuous monitoring of glucose and that sort of thing, there's over hundreds, you know, there are hundreds of thousands of data points in their entire medical history, but none of this is used today uh, at the point of care. Uh, and you want all this information to be organized, aggregated, structured in a way that you will be able to build even better models, easily query uh, this information, um, and then observe the health of that individual uh, uh, in comparison with the rest of the population. Because at that point, you'll be able to make those uh, personalized decisions. And then also for uh, patient engagement with the health lake uh, ability to now emit data back um, and share securely via APIs that uh, conform to the FHIR standard. So third-party applications can be built also um, to um, uh, provide that access, whether that's for analytics or uh, digital health application, for example, or patient access and that information. All that is, 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 is very, uh, very, um, uh, very important because ultimately you want to uh, uh, get at um, uh, better care of these, these populations, um, better enrollment clinical trials, reduce duplicative tests and waste in the healthcare systems. All that comes when you have your entire information available in a way that is structured and normalized and be able to query and, uh, and analyze. Um, and then the seamless integration between the health lake and the rest of the services like Amazon SageMaker, you can really start to um, uh, understand uh, relationships and meaning of that information, build better, better uh, decision support models and predictive models at the individual and the population level. 
Yeah, right. You, talk, you talked about all this data that's not not re really used, uh, and it's because it's not accessible. I presume uh, it's not in in one place that somebody can analyze. It's not standardized. It's not normalized. Um, yeah, is that right? So that is the biggest that is the biggest um, uh, challenge for every healthcare provider, payer, or life science organization today. If you look at, the, at this data, it's difficult to work with. Medical health data is really difficult. Data is siloed, is spread out across multiple systems and uh, is stored in, multi, uh, in, in incompatible formats. If you look at the last uh, decade, I mean, one of the greatest things is we witnessed a great transformation in healthcare towards digitization of the record. But your data is, is scattered across many of these systems, anywhere from fam your family history to clinical observation, diagnosis and treatments where you see the vast majority of that data is uh, uh, contained in unstructured medical records like doctor notes, um, PDFs of insurance, um, of laboratory reports or insurance claims and forms. Uh, with, the, um, uh, with, with COVID, we've seen a quite a bit of uptake of uh, digital sort of um, um, uh, delivery of care, uh, such as telemedicine and, and recorded audios and videos. Uh, X-rays and images, uh, the um, uh, large propagation of digital health apps and, and digital assistances and, and, and uh, wearables, and as well as, as these um, sort of monitors like the glucose monitor and whatnot. Data come in all shape and form and format and stored across all these things. It's a huge heavy lift for any um, healthcare organization to be able to aggregate, uh, normalize, store securely and then also um, uh, be able to kind of analyze this information and structure in a way that's that's easy to scale um, um, with regards to um, uh, the, the kind of problems that you're going after. Well, Dr. Kass, who, uh, we have to leave it there. Thank you so much. I mean, I've been saying for years in the cube, when is it that machines are going to be able to make, make better diagnoses than, than doctors? Maybe that's the wrong question. Maybe it's machines helping doctors make faster and more accurate diagnoses and lowering our costs. Thanks so much for coming back. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. Thank you. All right. And thank you for watching everybody. Keep it right there. This is Dave Vellante. We'll be back with more coverage of AWS reInvent 2020 and Cube Virtual right after this short break. <laughs>